All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through some minimalistic workouts that'll take you under 45 minutes per session. So this is a two day per week routine. However, if you have more training days available than that, I'll also explain how you can modify these two workouts into a three day per week, four day per week, or five day per week schedule. So everything you need to know to set up your own minimalistic training split will be laid out in this video. And throughout these workouts, we'll be applying many of the fundamental minimalist training principles that I discussed in my last video, which I'll link down below in case you missed it. All right, let's get started with full body day one. So after two to three minutes of brisk walking on the treadmill and a few dynamic stretches, just a few arm swings and a few leg swings is fine, we're kicking things off with two sets of flat dumbbell press. The first set will be a heavy set for four to six reps, and the second set will be a lighter back off set for eight to 10 reps. So we'll get our strength set in first and then do our hypertrophy set. Now, there are two reasons why we're doing a dumbbell press rather than a barbell press on a minimalist routine. First, dumbbells are generally more time efficient because you don't need to load and unload any plates, which does chew up some time. And second, dumbbells allow for a greater range of motion than the barbell. This normally isn't a big deal because we can compensate for the barbell's minor limitation by also including a stretch-focused exercise like a cable fly. However, on a minimalist routine, we're trying to minimize the number of exercises we do. So in this case, it makes more sense to choose a pressing exercise that also provides a large stretch on the pecs. So a dumbbell press or a dip would probably be your best options. Now, from a technique standpoint, I recommend lowering the dumbbells down with a slight elbow tuck at around 30 to 45 degrees when viewed from the top. And then as I press, I'll flare my elbows out. If you feel any shoulder discomfort when you flare, it's fine to just keep your elbows tucked the entire time. Okay, after that, we're moving on to the dumbbell Romanian deadlift for two sets of eight to 10 reps. Again, I'm going for the dumbbells here, mainly because they tend to be a bit more time efficient, but the biomechanics of the exercise will be the same whether you use dumbbells or a barbell. The main thing to keep in mind with the RDL is to simply push your butt back as you allow the weight to drop straight down under control. Don't think about lowering the weight to touch the floor. Simply set your hips back and let the dumbbells naturally lower in a straight line, reversing the motion once you feel a big stretch in your hamstrings without allowing your lower back to round. I like to maintain a nice smooth cadence on these where I don't fully lock out at the top and this helps me keep tension on my hamstrings. However, if you did wanna activate the glutes a bit more, you could lock the hips at the top and squeeze your glutes together. I'd also strongly recommend using straps for these so that your grip strength doesn't limit the amount of tension your hamstrings receive. Next, we're doing a two grip lat pull down for two sets of 10 to 12 reps using a different grip for each set. So for the first set, we're doing an overhand middle grip to target the mid back and the lats. And then on the second set, we're doing an underhand close grip to target the biceps a bit more and to hit the lats from a slightly different angle. Then after the second set, to get a little more bicep work, you can strip the weight back and do some overhead curls. This way we'll make sure the high threshold bicep fibers experience a high level of muscular tension as well. Okay, after that, we're moving on to a single working set of eight to 10 reps per leg on the dumbbell step up. This will be our main quad and glute focused movement for the day. Now, one thing to remember about minimalistic training is that because we're often only doing one single set for some exercises, it's very important that we execute that set as perfectly as possible. In this case, we wanna be forcing our front leg to carry all the load, so minimize cheating with your back leg as much as possible, and remember that it's just there for keeping balance. I prefer to work each leg one leg at a time because that way you're not losing tension in between reps, which can really drag the set out. Another thing you may notice is that you need to go heavier than you think. Most people stop well shy of failure on step ups and lunges. So to get to failure, or at least within one rep of failure, you'll probably need heavier weights than you'd normally use. And again, using straps is smart since they'll prevent your grip strength from being a limiting factor. Up next, we've got one set of 12 to 15 reps plus a drop set on the overhead cable tricep extension. The reason I'm going with an overhead tricep extension rather than a regular press down is that the triceps will already be hit in a more neutral shoulder position with the flat dumbbell press. So it'd be a bit more redundant to also hit them with a press down. Also a new 2022 study from Mayo and colleagues found that overhead tricep extensions resulted in about 40% more hypertrophy compared to regular press downs, even when volume matched, which is pretty huge. Now, there's been quite a lot of noise about this study online. Some people claim that the results are most likely a fluke. However, according to the Mass Research Review, it was a very well-designed study, and there are at least three plausible explanations for why overhead extensions led to substantially more muscle growth than press downs. So while I wouldn't put too much stock in a single study like this, if you are limited on time and can only fit in one tricep isolation movement, I would favor an overhead tricep extension more than press downs. 
Okay, so for these, you wanna lock your elbow in place with the cable just behind your head, squeeze your triceps to move the weight, and then lower the weight back down under control and try to feel a nice big stretch at the bottom. After reaching failure once, I'll drop the weight back by about 30 to 40% and then take the triceps to failure once again. Okay, after that, we've got one set of 12 to 15 reps plus another drop set on the machine lateral raise. I personally use this Atlantis standing lateral raise machine at my gym, mostly because I find I can get a much larger range of motion here while maintaining consistent tension on my side delts. However, if you don't have this machine, you can use a seated machine option or a cable machine or even dumbbells. As long as you're taking the muscle to failure with good form, the fibers will be maximally recruited regardless. I also strap in again here so I can use only my side delts to sweep the weight out as opposed to relying on my grip and more specifically my thumb to support the weight. Again, I use a larger than usual ROM on these, but if that ROM isn't comfortable for you, you can just stop at 90 degrees, so parallel to the floor. And again, as long as you're taking the set to failure, the total activation level will be very similar. And again, after reaching failure, I'll drop the weight by 30 to 40% and go to failure again to really finish the fibers off and get in a little extra volume without killing too much time by doing a whole other set. Okay, and to finish off the first full body day of the week, we're doing one set of 12 to 15 reps on the horizontal toe press for the calves. Now, doing calf raises on a leg press machine is the exact same basic movement pattern as doing them on a standing calf raise machine because on both exercises, your leg is straight, not bent. However, when you're seated, your upper body doesn't have to bear any of the load, so I find that I'm able to get a better mind-muscle connection with my calves when I do calf raises on a seated leg press machine. And once again, after reaching failure, I'll drop the weight back by 30 to 40% and go to failure again. One thing to keep in mind with the calves is to make sure you don't start bouncing on the drop set reps. A lot of people have a tendency to let loose once fatigue starts setting in, but you'll get the most out of the set if you keep your form locked in. And remember, each and every rep should have a nice one second or so pause at the bottom and a full squeeze at the top. Okay, let's jump into full body day two. On the second day, we're kicking things off with the hack squat, doing one heavy top set for four to six reps, and then one lighter back off set for eight to 10 reps. Now, the reason I'm going for the hack squat is because on a minimalist routine, you can often get away with less warm up sets on machines than on free weight compound exercises. For example, with barbell back squats, it'll sometimes take me a half an hour just to get all my warm up sets done. Whereas with the hack squat, I'll just hit two, maybe three quick warm up sets, and then I'm doing my working sets within five or 10 minutes tops. So for the first heavy top set, I'm choosing a weight that'll have me about one rep shy of failure, so an RP of nine for four to six reps, and here I'm just focusing on moving the weight. I'm thinking about driving through my heels while maintaining consistent pressure against the shoulder pads. And after the first heavy set, I'll rest for about three minutes, and then for the back off set, I'll drop the weight back, and this time focus a little more on controlling the negative and feeling my quads working. This is more of the hypertrophy set, so I'm focusing more on the mind-muscle connection rather than just moving the weight. And on both sets, I'm getting to full depth and purposefully allowing my knees to come forward past my toes, which is perfectly safe, and I can link another video on that down below. Okay, after that, we're doing an antagonistic superset for the chest and back. Now, an antagonistic superset is when you train two opposing muscle groups back to back without rest. And I'm a big fan of these because one muscle will be working while the other is resting. So in this case, we're doing two sets of a high incline Smith machine press to target the pecs, shoulders, and triceps. And then we're supersetting that with a T-bar row to hit the mid traps, lats, rear delts, and to some extent, the biceps. With the incline press, I'm setting the bench angle a bit higher than usual, so around 45 to 60 degrees, and I'm doing that so the delts get more involved. Rather than doing both a vertical press and a horizontal press, we're just meeting in the middle with a high incline press to save on time. And this will do a good job of hitting the pecs and the shoulders with a single movement. We're also taking a slightly closer grip so we can take the triceps through a greater range of motion, and this will shift some of the emphasis to the upper pecs as well, which is a weak point for most people. Then we're supersetting this with 10 to 12 reps on the T-bar row. Now, my gym's T-bar row machine is right next to the Smith machine, so I can superset these two easily, but if your gym has these two machines further apart, instead, you can just flip around on the bench, grab some dumbbells, and do some chest-supported incline dumbbell rows instead of T-bar rows for the same sets and reps. Now, when doing T-bar rows, I'll usually do one set with a wider grip and one set with a closer grip just to target the back from slightly different angles. And I should also point out that even though we are supersetting, I'll still rest for about 30 seconds to a minute in between the two exercises. So just because you're supersetting and you're going back and forth doesn't mean you need to go straight to the other exercise. Getting a little rest in between to catch your breath is a good idea. So in practice, the superset will look something more like this, which still saves on time, but allows me to recuperate more in between supersets. All right, after that, we're moving on to one set of 10 to 12 reps on the seated hamstring curl plus a drop set. 
A recent 2020 study showed greater hamstrings growth with seated leg curls over lying leg curls across a 12 week training study. So if we're given the option to do only one, I pretty much always favor seated leg curls these days. And because this difference seems to be related to the higher degree of stretch you get on the hamstrings with the seated variation, I'll accentuate this effect by leaning forward over the machine throughout the set. And then since we're only doing one set here, we're taking it all the way to failure and then dropping the weight back by 30 to 40% and going to failure again. Then we're doing one set of 12 to 15 reps on the easy bar bicep curl plus some myo reps. Again, just one all out set to failure here. So we wanna make sure we execute that set as perfectly as possible. So I'm focusing on curling the weight out and up, not just up and thinking about driving through my pinky to cue for supination as I curl. I'm also thinking about squeezing my biceps to move the weight and keeping a looser grip on the bar so that my forearms don't take over. After hitting failure with good technique, we're doing some myo reps to enhance the set further rather than a drop set this time. So this time we're gonna keep the weight the same and instead of dropping the weight back, we'll simply rest for three to four seconds and then do another four reps. Then we'll rest for another three to four seconds and do another four reps. And we'll just keep doing that until we can no longer get four reps. At that point, the set is done. Now, the good thing about myo reps is that they allow you to get in a lot more high tension reps in a short period of time. Remember that it isn't until near the very end of a set that reps become maximally hypertrophic. So by doing these myo rep mini sets where the muscle is already very close to failure, you're essentially cutting out any of those early low tension reps and jumping straight to the more effective stuff. All right, and to finish off the workout, we're doing one set of cable crunches for 12 to 15 reps plus a double drop set. So I like to do these kneeling with the rope locked in over my head, and then I'll crunch down hard on my abs and allow my entire back to round, including my lower back. After reaching failure once, I'll drop the weight back by about 30% and then go to failure again. And then to really finish things off, we'll do one more drop set this time. So I'll strip it back another 20 to 30% and then go to failure one last time. Now, if you guys were wondering how you could adapt this to a three, four, or five day per week program, this is how I would do it. You'd keep most of the exercises, sets, and reps the same, but simply modify how you'd split up your volume throughout the week. If you wanna train three days a week, I'd do the same full body workout number one and then split the second full body day up into an upper body day and a lower body day. You could also add a little more volume to the upper lower days by either adding an extra set for some of these exercises or you could add a few extra exercises for your individual weak points on those days. If you wanna train four days a week, you just split up both full body workouts into two separate upper lower days. So you'd go upper lower rest, upper lower rest rest. And again, you can add some volume to these workouts if you find them to be a bit too short. And if you wanna train five days a week, you could do the same basic thing, but this time with an upper lower push pull leg split done five days per week. Or if you wanna have all this work done for you, you can check out my new 12 week essentials program, which just launched this week over on jeffnipper.com. It's made up of workouts very similar to the ones in this video that are designed to get you in and out of the gym in under 45 minutes. It comes in a two day per week, three day per week, four day per week, and five day per week version. And I'm gonna leave it at 20% off for another week if you guys wanna pick it up. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.